Before I get this video started, I'm gonna do a little Q and A. I was asked, hey Rob, what is the one thing you reviewed that you hated? And I'm gonna tell you this, mostly I will not do a review on anything I hate. But sometimes you get something and it's like, well, I've opened it, I might as well cover it. And uh, the thing I hated most, right here, see this? Captain Kirk, my wife torments me with the shirt. She will put it on. I, mm, I hate this. I got it in one of those, uh, remember when they used to have those like mystery boxes where they give you like a whole bunch of nerd stuff? There's this. So my wife will put it on and go, hey baby, mm -hmm. want a little bit of this? And I gotta look at Captain Kirk. Just to be clear, I don't hate Captain Kirk. I just hate this freaking shirt. I love that shirt. <sighs> You've got mail. What's that noise? Oh, it's an email from PXN. I'd like to know, can you insert a link to our website in your review video so your viewers can click to view our website directly? Also, we can give you a nice discount for your viewers if they buy from our website. Okay. What's the code? Oh. Use the discount code PXN code 20 to get 20% off. Yeah, I'll put that down below. Hey there, Real Gamers and Gatekeepers, Retro Rob here. And today, we've got a pretty requested video, and that is the PXN V9. A while ago, I did the V... <laughs> Looks so snobby. <laughs> yes, the PXN V9. Anyway, a while back, I did a video on the PXN V900, had a lot of fun doing it, and it became fairly popular, I mean, for me. And I was asked, hey, am I ever going to do one on the V9? And I said, yeah, as soon as PXN sends me one. Well, guess what? PXN sent me one. So today we're gonna take a look at the PXN V9, which improves on the original V900 by adding a shifter. And it looks like the pedals might be a little bit heavier. So we'll find out. We're gonna start this video as we always do with the front of the box. PXN V9, compatible with the PS3, PS4, Switch, Xbox One, and PC. I have three of these devices, only two of them I have any racing games on. I barely ever play the Xbox One on anything other than Call of Duty, so that one's out, but we will test it on the PC and Switch. Note that this has a 900 degree turning radius, that is a big deal. Uh, there are a lot of steering wheels that do not do that and that's one of the reasons I think why this is sold so well. I like that. Here's the back of the box making it much easier for lazy YouTubers to rattle off all the features. Left and right paddles. That's for shifting if you're lazy and don't have the shifter or don't want to use it. D-pad. ABXY. Indicator light. That indicates stuff. Also the function buttons, which I've shown you in the past. Clutch, brake, accelerator, high and low gear shifting, six plus one gear lever, and a handbrake switch. Sweet. The right side of the box is actually a repeat of some stuff that's on the front, but this here has some product features that I wanna go through. By the way, this is the left side of the box. Compatible with multiple platforms on PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Intelligent double core for the two modes of X input and D input on PC fit for different racing games. Um, okay, so that's a little bit goofy English there, but it does X input and D input, which is important because different games do support different input modes. Rotation angle adjustable from 270, which is kind of the standard that you'll get on low end uh, steering wheels to 900 degree. That's a big deal. I really like the 900 degrees, as I mentioned earlier. Supports audio communicate function on PS4 and Xbox One platforms. The V9 tool app is designed, oh, there's a tool app. Hmm. For high configuration of steering wheel settings, which providing better gaming experience. Hey, I'm reading it as I see it. Pressure sensitive pedals. Simulated real racing car. I 
Don't know what that means, maybe we'll find out. Built-in double vibration motors brings you realistic gaming experience. I did like that feature on the last steering wheel as well. Ergonomic structure design, racing wheel with artificial skin touching and feeling. Well, this is gonna get personal. Equipped with six speed manual transmission shifter, which is awesome. Let's open it up. What's in Rob's box? I'm experimenting with unboxing angles, so sorry if this doesn't work out, but let's try it at least. There's some tabs. And then there's this front tab. Why is it not coming? Oh, didn't need to. All right. Woo. It's a box with some stuff. Let's see what's in here. I crack up if it's just like a spacer. Nothing in it. But it's not. All right, we got the clamps for holding it onto the table. That's useful. We have the steering wheel itself. I'll show you that in a minute. Got the shifter. It's got a little clamp on the bottom of it. I'll show you that in a minute. We've got cables. These are marked for PS4 and Xbox One. Not sure whether you use them with PC. I would guess you do. And finally, we got the foot pedals down below here. And we'll go into these. And yeah, they're not terribly more heavy than the other ones. They're a little bit more though. All right, let's look at these components. First things first, here's the manual. It gets into English about halfway through. And the English is moderately okay. It's definitely not terrible. There we go. So it's two color. Looks good though. There's the instructions for connecting to a PS4 if you're interested. I can ask that and there's the Xbox One instructions and you notice that uh, it's a pass-through system for those. There we go. And here is the steering wheel. Has a nice rubbery feel to the grips. This feels really, really good. Uh, D-pad. You know, the A, B, X, Y, it's got L1, L2, and L3. Same with right program mode. Uh, it's got the share button built into it. And then of course an options button also has the little flippers as well. There's suction cups on the bottom. The weight is pretty good. It feels nice uh, when you're steering back and forth. There's a switch underneath here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, you can steer it through. Nah, it's hard for you to see, but there is a switch down here. It switches from 900 degree mode to uh, 270 degree mode. Let's turn it around. And there is the front of it. Looks very attractive. Pull this up. There's a pass through for the controller. Headphone jacks if you're using it with like an Xbox or something like that. And then you've got the foot pedals and the shifter. Looks very similar to the 900. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, USB cable, it's about seven feet long. How could I forget? All right, so here are the foot pedals. They're not overly heavy to be honest, but these are metal. These surfaces are metal and they're fairly thick. If you look at the side, see that surface? That's all metal there. And this pretty much has a similar design to the V900 as well and that it flips out for some extra brace. This looks really clean though. It's got a really good look to it. I like it. And these feel eh? 
Not bad. Got no complaints. And here is the shifter. I've never used a shifter on a video game before. Not at home anyway. Having the arcades. But anyway, yep. Goes through the full range of motions. There's two switches on it. Uh, one's labeled low high. The other one looks like it's a parking brake. Right there. Pretty cool. These feel really nice. There's the clamp on the bottom. You just basically unscrew it and screw it back in. There's also a clamp on the steering wheel itself. Uh, let me show you how you put those in. All right, here's the clamps. They are included. There's a little uh, sliding pieces, so you just basically drop it in and then slide it forward. Again, drop in and slide. Oop, that one still needs to be locked in place. There we go. Now they're both locked in place and you're ready to go. If you'd like to, the suction cups are removable. You just basically turn them. There we go. Turn them to the right to unlock them. Turn them to the left to put them back on. Both the shifter and the foot pedals have about five foot cables and the shifter plugs in here. Pedals plug in here. Now I just take this last cable, plug it into my PC and I'm ready to roll. Or your Xbox, or your PlayStation, or your Switch. You get what I mean. Let's go play something. Warning radiation at unsafe levels. On my video on the V900, I showed you how you could program that steering wheel using the button system, like a little program button and stuff like that. And you can still do that for the V9, but you'd be a sadist because you could do this. You can use this app, download it to your iPhone or your Android phone, and it will connect directly to your controller and you can map it from there, which is just awesome. So here it is. You can adjust the turning, sensitivity, vibration, all that stuff is adjustable here. You can remap the uh, different buttons to keys and and change the mode from x input to d input but even cooler if you go to configuration here you can actually load preset configurations for your game and then you can modify from there if you want really really cool i like that all right some aceto corsa notes first thing is you're going to have to map everything out uh, in the game including the shifter uh, another thing to note is if you're in a rush, uh, hit Control G and you can turn the auto shifter off and that's the only way your gearbox is going to work. Number two note on this game, if the original car didn't have a stick shift and it had a flip shift, it's not going to use a stick shift. It has to actually be a car that had the stick shift. All right, so uh, let's put her into first and take her out. There we go. And it is just... I'm not the best shifter in the world. Oh, see, I popped into third, and that's problematic. But anyway, taking it for a leisurely cruise around the track. <laughs> this thing sounds like some chickens are inside it. There we go. As you can see, steer's really nice, brakes are working. Pretty much everything's mappable, and I'm having no problems with it at all. So it works really well. I'm really happy with it for this game. Uh, Assetto isn't a game I honestly played much before I had this, but you know now that I can shift. Let's pop it out of gear here. Now I can shift, I want to play it. Uh, the other thing is, reverse is just like regular reverse. Got to press down and back. There we go. I want to look backwards here. <laughs> Freaking great. Here we have Forza Horizon. 
And uh, it's, to be honest, not a great experience uh, with this controller. And that I hear is a thing with every steering wheel that it just doesn't really do a great job with steering wheels and that you have a hard time and there are games that are just basically designed to be played with a game pad it's just i i find it particularly disappointing in this one because it's just such an enjoyable game in general but they really kind of didn't put in an effort to make steering wheels work now there are steering wheels that are listed as compatible with this uh, and this one is too. It's not listed, but it is compatible with it. But the complaint is that you can never do terribly well with a steering wheel on this game because it's really not designed that way. And you can tell in the options it gives you, which is basically none. Uh, there's just not a lot of options. And that lack of granularity is odd in a full price console game. I mean, this isn't like a cheap game. I, and I say console, and that's because <laughs> really the problem is this game has just a wee bit of console-itis to it. It is a console port, and Microsoft hasn't really put out the effort to make it into a real PC port. I, I'm not getting into the snobbery of it. I'm just saying they're different platforms, and you should work on supporting the platform that you're running the game on if you're gonna charge full price otherwise make it a twenty dollar game all right I'm I am like over complaining but uh, I've got basically full steering assist on this and it's a bit of a fight you, you couldn't go online with this you know and again this is not the steering wheels fault it's the game's fault all right, let's go on to something more enjoyable. Fancy a little bit of dirt rally. This is one of those deals where the steering wheel really is a bit better than the controller because you've got a little bit more nuance in your control. And, and this part of the Dirt series, this has a lot of nuance in how you can set the controls, so it makes it a lot better. And right too long, tights to one. Ooh, don't hit those cars. Left two, and right one, 100. Come on now. I mean, this is just right five, great. Right. Oh. Into left one half long. Looks good. Plays good. And left two half long. All good. Into right four long. Don't cut on exit. I wonder if eventually I'm gonna actually do better with a steering wheel on this one. Right six long over crest. One hundred. Woohoo! And left two long past junction sixty. You didn't see that. And here we go with some hotshot racing. Not a lot of remapping I had to do here. I uh, just mapped the boost to the right flipper or shifter, whatever you want to call it. And it basically just works. This game's great, by the way. If you've never played it, a uh, nice little arcade racer. Reminds me of the early ri part of the Ridge Racer series. Hmm. Plus, there's some humorous banter in it. Occasionally, you'll get a laugh. Bugger. Oh, that was a bad, bad move there. Come on now. No. 
Yeah, overshot it. Third place. There we go. <laughs> Just gotta tap it. Come on. Come on now. Get back in it. <laughs> I love, like, when I do really well at a game, when I'm not recording, and then I start recording and I do just awful. I am Schrodinger's gamer. Come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You can pull this off. For the record, some cars do way better than others with the steering wheel on this game. There we go. Come on. Man, second place. All right, here I have it connected to my Nintendo Switch, but you can actually connect it to PlayStation and Xbox. You will need to pass it through your controller. However, I have not tried the Xbox or the PlayStation for this. I've only got a couple games on my Xbox, to be honest, and I don't have a PlayStation anymore, so bummer. Well, I have like a PS1 and a PS2, but... You know what I mean. I don't have any modern PlayStation stuff. Uh, anyway, the app does pick up what console you're plugged into, and it does have specific settings for different games. Uh, Mario Kart was on this one. We're going to be playing Need for Speed, of course, uh, because these guys are a little bit more friendly about letting me do recordings of their stuff. So, all right, here we go. Oop, that's continue. Let's try it out. And we'll just skip this. Ooh, I feel... I feel the rumble. Hopefully that's not way too loud. And note, I can remap this if I want to. I have to remap that if I want to try it. Oh, oh, no! Oh. the hang of it.
my car's taking a little damage. That was a freaking joy. Heck yeah, that's better than I do with a Joy-Con. All right, let's wrap things up. And that about wraps it up for the PXN V9 racing wheel. I loved the 900. This one is oh so much better though. It just, uh, they kind of went over the top on it and it's fairly cheap. Uh, if you're looking for a racing wheel uh, to do some light arcading, right up to you're just starting to get into simulations this would be a great stick for it feels very durable love the rubberized grips the pedals on the bottom are heavy enough and it's got that flip out thing so that it does not walk which i really like uh note that the shifter is only supported in games that support the shifter so that's uh your more high-end type of racing games. I mean, you can program it so it can upshift and downshift in regular games, but you can use the paddle just as well. Uh, note especially on uh, devices like your consoles, it's gonna be a little bit more limited what you can do with it, but if you got a PC that you game on and a console, this is great because it'll switch modes. I think one of the big highlights as well of this thing is the app. I mean, it just made life so much easier with programming. On the last one, you know, I had to hit the program button and set a bunch of crap. Not anymore. I just press a button and the thing's ready to go. So really happy for it uh, or happy with it. I'm happy for it. Gee, I'm happy for you. It's it's down here. You can't You can't see it, but it's right here. Anyway. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very happy with the wheel. Uh, I think on the budget end of things, you really can't go wrong with it. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, found it helpful, please do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.